What's good? Brian Tong here, and welcome to Googleicious for everything Google you can think of. Google I.O. is going to be here before you know it on May the 8th, but a new report from Bloomberg is revealing some of the goodies we can expect from Android P with internal codename Pistachio Ice Cream. Mmm. That's my favorite. Bloomberg says Android P will bring support for more unique display types to accommodate things like iPhone X-esque notches as some Android phones are expected to move in that direction. We've seen it with the Essential Phones notch, and Android P will also offer support for unique form factors like ZTE's Axum M. Other visual changes include what they call a dramatic redesign to Google's mobile OS with the hopes of using the aesthetic to persuade more iPhone users to switch to Android P devices. Now, there's been rumblings of material design too, and it could be the new Android P look, but a leak from a now pulled Chromium commit showed some of the subtle changes in coloring that you may or may not be able to tell from these images. The shades of gray look a little cooler and not as warm, and the reds are slightly darker and intense. It's expected to be more than just a color palette swap. Now, Bloomberg also says that Google will be pushing for even tighter Google Assistant integration in Android P. The report says they'll be opening it up even more for third-party developers to integrate the Assistant into their own apps. All right, the latest numbers from IDC Research found that Google doubled their shipments of Pixel smartphones in 2017 into a total of 3.9 million. That's double, and that's a good thing. Now, put that in perspective, and in just the fourth quarter of 2017, IDC estimates Apple shipped 77.3 million phones and Samsung shipped 74.1 million phones. So, you know, Google is making a great phone, but they have a long, long way to catch up. And it's not really even just catching up, just make steady growth year by year, and they have the capital to support it. All right, we're just about a week away from unveiling the new Samsung Galaxy S9, but new details and rumors, they keep rolling in. ET News reports the new S9 will finally be bringing stereo speakers with a bottom firing speaker at the top and the bottom of the new flagship phone. Thank you. And this one probably won't come as a surprise, but surprise, Samsung is bringing their own type of emojis, a la Apple. Now the name has not been leaked yet, but Samsung's 3D emojis will make their debut with an actual name during the reveal, and they are reportedly even more advanced compared to Apple's. Now, let's just place bets right now. I'm going with Samojis because it sounds like something horrible they would do. And I'm sorry, but when we're trying to one-up each other with our Animoji game, that tells me phones are running out of things to do. Come on, son. All right, you know, I will admit though, the only time I've ever used them is with my nephews. And when they send them, they're like so cute. It just makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. All right, Samsung's official announcement will happen on February the 25th, and we'll be there with CNET's live coverage throughout the keynote. And some news that might let you down, after LG decided they would stop releasing new phones yearly, they will now focus on new variants of the LG V30 at Mobile World Congress this year. LG officially announced that the 2018 version of the LG V30 will feature the debut of their new artificial intelligence tech. Now, some of the key improvements, thanks to this new AI system, will be Vision AI for their next-gen image recognition that will analyze a picture as it's being taken and offer you the best settings. Their voice AI will bring exclusive LG voice commands, including new ones for taking specific types of photos like a food photo or a slow motion video. Now, LG's AI features will expand to not only their new phones they released in 2018, but also to some pre-existing ones as well. And the story that turned some heads this week, Consumer Reports said that in their audio testing, the HomePod sounds good, but other smart speakers sound better. Now, this is what they said. The HomePod's bass was a bit boomy and overemphasized, and the mid-range tones were somewhat hazy, meaning that some of the nuance in vocals, guitars, and horns was lost. These elements of the music couldn't be heard as distinctly as in more highly rated speakers. Treble sounds like cymbals were underemphasized, but the HomePod played reasonably loudly in a mid-sized room. The bottom line? Overall, the sound of the HomePod was a bit muddy compared with what the Sonos One and Google Home Max delivered. And you know what, honestly, I 100% agree with their assessment. It's what I heard when I compared them straight up with the Home Max as well, you know, great boom, but the vocals weren't very clear on the HomePod compared to the Google Home Max. Now, speaker sound quality will also really sound different to you depending on the genres of music that you personally like to listen to. So listen for yourself because I'm not, and Consumer Reports isn't the expert for your ears. All right, that's going to do it for this week. You can email me at googleicious at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for some more of that Googleicious.